my life, you know, and, and that revelation has helped me, one, know who he is and, and, and see and experience and embrace his love for me. But they have also uh, helped me be where I am today, you know. One thing that I have come to realize is that being a Christian is a decision because this stems from one being drawn by the Spirit. You know, we are always called by God. He's always calling his children because he wants all of his children to be with him. But not everybody answers the calling at the same time. Some will do it when they're little. Others will do it when they're adolescents. Others when they're on their deathbed, whenever. The important thing is that we do answer that calling. You know, we're drawn by the Spirit, and, and that's something that we feel. And when we come to Him, and we give our lives to Him, we are answering that calling. So, I want to start, um, let me grab this real quick. I want to start, if you can open your Bibles with me, if you have one. Go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. You know, there's things that I, that I want to share with you tonight. Hopefully, thank you, Mike, will make sense to you as it did for me when I was putting all this together. The Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 uh, say, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. If you look at this, this is easier said than done. You know, anyone that has walked with the Lord, either recently or all their life, uh, people that have experienced him, his presence, that have heard from him, you know, sometimes have a difficult time doing this. So, if that's a hard thing to do for someone that has lived most of their life as a Christian person, how much more so would it be for a new, a person that was just born again, you know, a new believer, a new Christian? So, as I was thinking, Lord, what I'm, what am I going to talk about uh, tomorrow, being today? I started thinking about a situation that happened to me. It's something that kind of shaped how I was a few years ago. And, and my main thing was that I have always had trust issues. I still do, up to a degree. Uh, but my trust issues before were towards people in the sense that I did not want to let anyone in, in my life. Um, but the trust issues that I have right now, you know, it's, it's uh, don't have anything to do with what happened to me in the past, it's more so that I don't trust when I have to depend on someone to do something that I can do because I don't, I like things to be done correctly. <laughs> yeah, it's, Something else, but anyway. Uh, the reason why I had this trust issues is because I had been wronged by a person. So I'm going to tell you uh, a little story about my past. You know, when I was in high school, I met this girl, and I fell in love with her, you know. It was all fine and dandy, you know, when you're in high school, you're all giddy, and you want to do things to impress this girl and all that. So it worked, you know, we started dating. We did it for three years. And after three years, she made the decision to end the relationship. And she gave me a really lame excuse. Her excuse was that whenever we had an argument, I never got mad or agitated. She was always the one that was wailing her arms. I told her, what do you want? Do you want us to start punching each other? There has to be a person calmed enough to keep the situation under control. You know, so I decided that I wanted to be that person. Uh, 
So anyway, she ended the relationship. And after that happened, I found out that she hadn't been faithful to me during the time that we were together and that it had happened multiple times. So when I found out that that had happened, I became withdrawn. I did not let people, uh, you know, get close to me in an emotional way. I started to repress my feelings uh, to the point that I hardened my heart. And my trust issues were not so much towards all people in general, it was more so towards women, because in my mind and in my heart, women were hurtful. So that went on for a couple of years, you know, I still hung out with friends and all, all that, but I did not want to allow myself to start feeling or having romantic feelings towards another woman because I did not want to go through the same thing again. So I built this wall of, of, wall of resentment around me. Um, and I played it really cool because no one knew about this. You know, I was able to mask all of that uh, hurt, excuse me, and resentment that I had towards, um, you know, people more so, as I said, women. But then after a couple of years, I met Ariadna, you know. Some of you had a chance to meet her once. Um, things didn't work out, but anyway, the Lord has a plan for me. Uh, so we met, and, you know, we started talking, and no matter how hard I tried to not let her in, I just couldn't, you know, um, stop that from happening. She was the only person that was able to get through that barrier that I had built. And as I think about those things, I remembered that the year before is when I had my first encounter with the Lord. I was going to this church with my cousin back home. And one day we get there before the service. Uh, they encourage people to pray individually and all that. And as I was praying, I felt that the Holy Spirit told me that I needed to ask for forgiveness. So that was kind of like, whoa, you know, it was kind of surreal for me because I had never experienced that before. And I was still a little uh, weary in the whole going to church thing because I was raised a Catholic, you know, and mass is very structured. I was an altar boy and, and all those things. And I was used to the whole ritual at fi the 15 minute mark, you have to get up then you sit then you kneel and you know all those things. Um, so when I had that, that experience with him, I went to my house and I gathered all my family and I told them, I need to talk to you. I was in church and this happened to me and I feel that I have to ask all of you for forgiveness. And one thing that sticks the most, or, or I remember the most out of, out of that particular day, is one thing that my grandmother told me. And she said to me, you have done nothing to me, so there's nothing for you to ask me to forgive you about, which is, it was very good because when she died, I was able to take that, you know, in, in, in a better way than I would have before. If I had in my mind, oh man, we didn't mend things before she died and all those things, because it was very uh, unexpected when it happened for her. So as my relationship with Ariana started to grow, I began to feel again. And when I started feeling again, that's when a, that was this ver the very specific moment that a prophecy from the Lord was fulfilled in my life. And that was Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. A new heart also I, will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. So, before that happened in my life, I had allowed bitterness 
towards what someone did to me to take over my heart to the point that it hardened, became a heart of stone. But the Lord changed that. And the reason why that happened to me is because I had, I could not forgive that person. She had betrayed me. John chapter 13, verse 21. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. I can imagine Jesus sitting there all cool, you know. Hey, let me tell you something. One of you is going to betray me. And he didn't even flinch, you know. But he had something that we don't have, and it's he was God himself in the flesh, you know. He had this faith in God that um, we're never going to get there because we're not perfect. But we have our faith in him. So Jesus, the Son of God, God himself in the flesh, said that he was going to be betrayed. Well, guess what? If Jesus was betrayed, you will also be betrayed. But it is not someone's betrayal of you that is going to destroy you. It's the bitterness that you allow in your heart as a result. And if you allow bitterness in your heart, that's when you begin to be destroyed. So the secret on how not to allow that to happen is how you handle that situation. James chapter 3, verses 13 through 16. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. That is the destruction that I'm talking about. Because when you have you allow those feelings to take over you, it is hard for you to do things correctly. You know, when you don't build a foundation for your life on God, but you do it based on your emotions. Right. You start making bad decisions. Sure. Yeah. And I have witnessed that firsthand, how people that make decisions based on emotions yeah. start losing everything they have. Yeah. And it's sad, you know. It, 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 it breaks my heart, but it is up to them to make the decision on how they want to to make those decisions. Who are they going to trust? Are you going to trust your circumstances or are you going to trust what God says he's going to do for you? So when someone does something to you, you feel like something has been taken from you. All these negative feelings start to spawn and that opens the door to the devil to come and do what he wants to do to steer you away from God. You know, John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. So as I was thinking of, of this, you know, one of the reasons that this happens, this destruction of you, this negative feelings that you get when something happens to you, it stems because of a distorted image of God that people have. Yes. People have in their mind that, Yes, God gives you good things, but he also takes them away when you do something bad. And some people think that God is is up in heaven looking down, saying, okay, when are you going to screw up? When are you going to screw up? Ah, there it is, and I'm going to take it. No. That's not what he does, you know. They think that God punish, punishes you, that he takes away what he has given you, when the reality is that whatever we lose is because of poor decisions that we make. Yeah. So as I was thinking of, about that, and I'm talking about relationships, I, was, I started thinking about one particular time when I was in one of my marriage counseling sessions, and, and 
my therapist, he told me, you know, I've seen people in your same situation that have come here, talk to me. They sat in that same place that you are. And they turn to God and grow their faith. And they say, God is going to take care of it. He's going to fix it. And when things don't turn their way, they come in here and they start cursing him, cursing up a storm, saying God is bad and all this and all that. How do you know that the same thing is not going to happen to you? So when he asked me that question, I started laughing. I looked at him and I told him, I'm going to tell you why I know that's not that I know that it's not going to happen to me. There's one thing that I have very clear in my mind, and it's that God did not take her away from me. The reason why we are in this situation right now is because of bad decisions that we both made. God does not give you something that makes you happy to take it away, because that is not the kind of God that he is. That will make him a malicious God. I'm going to give a baby a lollipop, and then when he's sucking on it, I'm going to pull it. I'm going to yank it. What's that baby going to do? It's going to start crying, yeah. you know? So do you think God does that? No. God is always going to give us the desires of our heart. Yes. If God was a bad God that gives you things that will bring you up, will edify you, will make you happy, will bring you joy to take him away. Why would Romans 8.32 exist? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If God was a bad God, do you think he would have given up his own son for us that we don't deserve it? to redeem us so that we can get close to him. If God did that for all of us, he's not going to take anything from you that is godly, that is bringing you happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. Whatever you lose in here is because you made a bad decision. People just need to get a hold of that. So he gives us freely all things. He gave me a new heart, you know. Um, I might have not used that heart properly for a few years, but now I am, you know. I did not let my heart get hardened again. So we need to learn how to forgive people. It's not an easy thing to do. Because we want someone to pay for what has been stolen from us, you know. You start thinking, how am I going to hurt this person, you know? And then you let that bitterness come in. But we can't forgive because we have something that is so much more greater than what has been taken from us. And that is the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 12 to 14. Got a hold of myself. Kind of improvising today this okay there we go now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So when we have the Spirit of God inside of us and we allow God to move in our lives the way he wants to move, we can distinguish things in this world, what is coming from God and what is not. And when we allow God to do that, that's when we make good decisions because we are able to distance ourselves from things that are going to take us away. Right. Whatever it is that the devil is trying to get us to see with our physical eyes mm -hmm. as coming from God when we know it's not. Mm -hmm. You said it when you open the eyes of your heart being enlightened, you know.
he's talking about how we, having the Spirit of God inside of us, can speak about the promises that God has made us with the confidence that we have them, for they are our inheritance. But man cannot comprehend or see this truth because these things are only discerned by the Spirit. It is because we have this Spirit that we can forgive people. Right. Because we know that we have not lost anything, for our inheritance is in heavenly places. Right. An inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade, and that is reserved in heaven for us. We are just here on temporary time. Yeah. This is alone. Yes. When we die, this is going to turn to dust. Our spirit is going to live forever. Yes. The sooner that we realize that the things of the world are temporary, the better off we're going to be. We need to learn to forgive. We need to know that all things work together for good for those that love God. Yes. Romans 8:28. We need to cast our cares upon the Lord. 1 yes. Peter chapter 5 verse 7. You know, if you're in a bad situation, I think Sally posted something about this on Facebook recently that says, "Your bills, give them to God." This, give it to God. So that way when you get up in the morning, you know that you have everything. Mm -hmm. You know? Cast your cares upon him. Yeah. Don't worry. You know you're taken care of. Amen. He said it. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. Right. You will always be provided. Yes. He will take care of everything. Just trust him and rest in him. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So I want to close with this. After I read this, I remember seeing an image online floating around of one of the Lion King monkeys sitting, meditating. I don't know if you've seen it. Very comical. That it says forgive, not because they deserve, they deserve forgiveness, but because you deserve peace. The, f the very first time that I saw that, I, got, I actually got mad. I was like, no, that's wrong. And I said, no, because that's a selfish attitude to have. You don't forgive people because you deserve peace. You forgive people because he forgave you. Yeah. That's why you forgive people. Yeah. Because no one, you know, we, we, we don't deserve forgiveness. That's why... Jesus came and died for us right. so we could be forgiven. That's Not because we deserve peace. That's, that's a selfish attitude right. to have. So this is the last scripture. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32. I thought you were going to read this, Jody, when you, when you were talking about. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So again, don't forgive people because you deserve peace. Forgive them because he forgave you. So that's my message for tonight. And with that, you are dismissed in the name of the Lord. You be blessed. Thank you for listening to me. Yes, thank you. So, that's all I have. <laughs> Are you